Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of our panelists for being here. Um, I especially appreciate the work that the Kennedy Forum has done. Um, Mr. Kennedy, and you showed this earlier, this is actually the kind of report that I do not like the state of New Hampshire being on the front of, because what it points out is that we have actually the second highest rate of overdose deaths in the country. Um, we have the highest rate of fentanyl deaths in the country. This year alone, we had 12 people who have died from carfentanyl. Um, and the cost to the state of New Hampshire, you talk about the costs nationally, the cost just in New Hampshire in 2014, which is the year we have data for, was $2.36 billion. So this is a national epidemic. I certainly supported the commission's work. I wish, as you pointed out, that we, the president had declared a national emergency here because, in fact, that's what he promised in New Hampshire when he was campaigning there. Um, and I am very concerned about the impact of treatment, as you all have talked about, and how we make sure that the people who need treatment get treatment. In New Hampshire, what has made the biggest difference in treatment has been the expansion of Medicaid. That was the result of the Affordable Care Act. And um, Dr. McCann's cats, I, I would point you to the report that came out from the Department of Health and Human Services earlier this year in January that talks about the strategies to deal with the opioid epidemic. Um, the third one they point out is expansion of access to and the provision of medication-assisted treatment with methadone, buprenorphine, norphine, or nalox, naltrexone. Um, and it points out that the success of these strategies really rests on a base of health insurance coverage which means that our nation's best shot, and I'm quoting here, at reversing the opioid epidemic and providing needed care for opioid use disorders, substance use disorders, and mental illness depends on the continued success of the Affordable Care Act. So I wonder if, um, I would ask you, Mr. Kennedy, if you would talk about what happens um, in greater detail if we lose the ability to provide care under the Affordable Care Act one of the things, as you're aware, happened as the result of passing the tax bill is that we eliminated the individual mandate, which reports show from the CBO will throw about 13 million people off of their health care. So what should we look for that's going to happen with respect to the opioid epidemic if this repeal of an undermining of health care continues in terms of treatment for people? Well, thank you, Senator. I'm sorry that your state has uh, such high rankings in so many areas and also in the non-adherence to the parity law by your state's insurance companies that I would commend you, Mr. Chairman, uh, maybe to have those insurance companies come and talk to you all as to how do they explain why they're denying this care at such record rates instead of the fact that it is a, a national uh, crisis. So, you know, it's hard to paint a picture of how much worse it could get because it's pretty awful out there right now. I mean, the number of children in foster care has quadrupled in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, you know, social workers are forced to sit with these children in hotel rooms because there aren't available foster families. I mean, this is a dire, dire situation that is unbecoming of this great nation that we would allow our fellow Americans to live and die like this. And yet we find the political will, as you said, to pay for a tax cut, which is not for individuals. This is to corporations, transnational corporations who are not American citizens, who are getting the benefit of all the money we need in order to address this crisis through a tax cut uh, from 35 to 20 percent. Honestly, the politics of it, I just can't explain. I, I just cannot explain. I can just say anybody who's out there and seeing this uh, sh shudders every time they're out there. And then we all have to kind of put our suits back on and try to get back into life because it's too devastating to imagine that this could get any worse. Well, as you point out, I have um, friends who have had to adopt their grandchildren because they had um, their daughter and her 
um, husband were affected. He was um, had died from an overdose. And one of the things he said to me, which really resonated, is he said, I hope I can live to be 80 so I can get the youngest one through high school. We should not be having that happen in the United States no. of America. No. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Collins, I very much appreciate the work that you've been doing to try and work with private industry with pharmaceutical companies to encourage them to um, help as we look at how we develop new medications and address the opioid epidemic. Can you talk about what more you think Congress can do in this respect as you're looking at the role that private um, companies can play? Well, already mentioned was the opportunity for us to have greater flexibility in moving quickly on these research needs. And so this other transaction authority, uh, which Senator Alexander asked about, would be very helpful. We have that authority in some other things that we do, our, our common fund, which is sort of our venture capital space, the All of Us program, which is enrolling a million Americans over the course of the next few years. And it turns out to be incredibly useful for moving swiftly and flexibly, guided by very astute program managers. And that would be very useful to have in this space as well, but it requires approval from you all. Uh, I did mention also the opportunity to get a special exception to Schedule I drugs for research purposes because that's getting in the way of being able to look, for instance, at some of these synthetic opioids, fentanyl and others that are even more wild and crazy out there that we can't really study because they're characterized as Schedule I and it takes too long to be able to get the approvals. And so we may be missing out on learning more about this next generation of synthetics that we should really get more information about. And of course, particularly from this Congress, we appreciate the strong support you have given to NIH just in terms of our ability to do the research. I can promise you we are prioritizing this area of research to the maximum level possible with the funds that come forward from this appropriations process every year. But from what you've heard, uh, clearly if we're serious about putting the accelerator all the way down, we're going to need to do something pretty exceptional here or we are going to be slower than we should be. Um, well, I appreciate that and certainly look forward to working on some of those changes that would give you that flexibility. You talked about the development of a more effective drug that will do what naloxone, Narcan, is doing. One of the issues we've had in New Hampshire has been the dramatic increases in the cost of Narcan that makes it more expensive for communities to give out to law enforcement and firefighters. Have you seen that those increases and is there anything, I mean, my assumption is it's a, a market response and it's not really an increase in cars, cost to the pharmaceutical companies so that they need to raise the prices. Certainly there has been a dramatic increase in the cost of the injectable form of Nar Narcan. But I'm happy to say the, the nasal installation, uh, again, something that we had a lot to do with working with a company to develop, uh, has remained reasonably affordable. As I said earlier, you can get two of these that are ready for use for 70 bucks. And so that is much more within the realm of affordability uh, from what people would like to see. And we're proud that we had a chance to make that contribution, both in terms of the fact that this is more easy to administer and that there's a competition there that's managed, I think, to keep the prices more reasonable. Um, I certainly agree with that, and I applaud the work that NIH has done. I, I would point out that in communities where they're responding to um, literally dozens of overdose calls in a day, mm -hmm. and many times they have to give patients two and three doses of Narcan, that $70 is still pretty expensive. And we need to, we need to encourage the pharmaceutical companies to take responsibility for the situation that they have helped create. And I certainly hope that they will, they will do that in thinking about how they can come to the table to help us develop new ways of treating um, overdose, substance use disorders, and overdoses. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back, Dr. Eleanor McCann's-Katz, to um, the comments that Senator Capito made. I applaud and echo those. I think um, we would like to see SAMHSA re-look at the formula. Um, I was very disappointed during the Obama administration when SAMHSA issued that formula. I continue to be disappointed that you have um, reiterated it for this year as well, for 2018. Um, and I just want to make sure I understand. I, I, 
I know that we all appreciate SAMHSA's trying to get additional funds to help those states that are most at risk. But you talked about the effort to do that. Now, New Hampshire was one of 10 states eligible for an additional um, funding from SAMHSA. But it's $1 million for those 10 states. It's over three years. That's, you know, just over $300,000, and it's only going to go to three states. So that is just a drop in the ocean, not even in the bucket, in terms of the challenges that we face. So I would urge you at SAMHSA, and you know, I think all of us in Congress are happy to work with you on this. This is a bipartisan issue. We wanna, we wanna try and address the issue in the best way we can, but I would urge you to go back and look at what can be done that will be more effective than a pittance of help for those states that most need it. We, we certainly are looking at that and doing um, everything we can to try to bring resources to those states that have the greatest the greatest need, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you.